we're back. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another tutorial video. Now it's pretty crazy that we've done over 75 videos here on YouTube, but something that we haven't dove too much into is how to paint fabric materials, whether that be prime knit, mesh, or whatever the case may be, we haven't really made an entire video dedicated to that. So today we wanted to walk you guys through successfully painting a pair of the Yeezy 350 V2s, which are made up of prime knit. And so one of the main challenges that we'll be talking about in today's video is working with a material like this prime knit, but still keeping it soft somehow. And in doing so, there's just a few more steps and ingredients required than if you were working with something like a pair of leather-based shoes. So our main ingrediente, that's Spanish for ingredient in case you didn't know, is going to be Angelus 2 Soft or GAC 900. Now both of these products do the exact same thing, they are basically the same exact product, and what they do is help keep your fabric soft. So they thin out the paint a little bit and then through a little bit of heating they really help keep that material nice soft and feeling just like it came from the factory. So getting right into the prep work of the shoes, well that's the best part, there is no prep work required. We don't need to do any sanding, we don't need to do any acetoning, we don't need to do any scotch by pads scuffing up our surface. What happens when you're working with mesh or prime knit is the paint almost kind of dyes itself right into that material so this saves us a little bit of time in the beginning by removing the prep. So we're still going to be taping off the soles of our Yeezy so what I'm going to be using is some Scotch 2060 green tape. And this 2060 seems to be my go-to for working on just about any pair of shoes. I have a lot of experience with it. And then what I've been using recently to cover up the rest of the soles is this specific tape by this brand called Pro Tapes. It is this crepe paper and it is three inches wide. And what's really good about this is it's very low tack. So nothing gets left behind. That seemed to always be the issue with me when working with some of that two inch scotch beige masking tape that you would always get residue left behind when you peeled that off when putting it on any type of soles or anything like that. But this stuff, since it's really low tech, it's just really great for coverage, whether you're using it to cover off the bottom of soles or maybe you laid down a stencil and you wanna just get a few more inches of coverage around some other surface that you have painted, this stuff is great for that. And now that we have our soles taped up, it's time to get into some of our painting. And what we're gonna be doing on today's pair is just a very simple and clean Supreme colorway with the white stripe, with the red Supreme text, and the rest of the upper is gonna be red. So the way that I like to go about making the Supreme red is by mixing three different colors of Angelus red. I'd say the closest color to it is fire red, but I tend to like to make custom mixes for almost all my colors. So I basically do an even amount of chili red, fire red, and regular Angelus red to make the perfect supreme red in my opinion. And then in order to make this paint mixture ready to work with the fabric material, I'm gonna mix in our GAC 900 and we're gonna do this at a one to one ratio. So as much paint as we made, we're gonna use that exact same amount of the GAC 900. And of course, let's not forget to add in a little bit of duller at the end for this mix. Okay, so before we get into any of our main colors for this shoe, when I'm working with any fabric material style shoes, I like to lay down a base coat of white and what this really helps with is making sure that our colors are able to come out really vibrant on top of the fabric. So one thing that I've noticed with working with a lot of different fabric shoes over the years, if you were to just go into your main color right away on top of the factory fabric color, your colors wouldn't really be that saturated, it would take more coats in the long run, and you would kind of be wondering why it's taking so long to make the color really pop. And so by laying down a white base coat, even though we're working with white fabric already, you're just gonna set yourself up better because those colors are gonna be popping and more vibrant right away. Even though this step may seem a little redundant and it may seem easy to skip over, it will save you some headache in the long run, I can guarantee that. So before we get into any airbrushing or anything like that, the first thing that I like to do is go around with a nice angled brush near where our sole meets our tape lines. And I like to just kind of try to dab this brush into these areas because this can tend to kind of get overlooked with an airbrush and kind of left behind. And it's really kind of hard to hit from certain angles and whatnot. So you'll notice that when you take a paintbrush to a fabric material like this, it kind of seeps and spreads around and kind of dies in. So this is just a nice little technique to make sure that no areas get left behind. And so the one area of our shoe that we're not gonna be trying to get any paint on later is the stripe that is on all of the v2s so it would be really ideal to tape this off but unfortunately i have not been able to find any type of tape that holds up well at 
all when taping down this stripe. I've tried everything you can imagine. I have tried literally probably like a hundred different tapes. Uh, I've tried laying down vinyl, cutting it perfectly around there. Uh, like I said, I've tried every tape on the market to try to get this to stick, but there's really no great way. So what I do is just lay down some of the Angelus red vinyl tape, try to heat that and try to get it to hold as best as possible. You'll notice later in the video that it, it doesn't hold down that well, but it, it does do just enough because I know after we base coat these red and whatnot, we're still gonna have to go lay down and repaint this stripe white later anyway. If we were potentially doing this stripe black or any other color, it'd be okay to just lay down all your red first and then just go ahead, paint the stripe black. But because we are gonna be trying to do this white eventually, it would be nice to hold back as much paint as possible from getting on there. So some of the early colorways of the V2 make it a little bit visually easier for you to tell how you're gonna plan out this stripe because it has this kind of cool staggered line effect to it. And so now that we're just about ready to lay down our color, what I'm gonna be doing is using an airbrush to lay this down. You could of course do this job with a paintbrush, but something that I've definitely noticed is you will be able to keep the material a whole lot softer if you do airbrushing. And this is something that I picked up on a while ago when uh, taking notice of the difference between airbrushing a sock liner and painting it by hand. And if you think about it, what's happening is a whole lot less paint is hitting the surface by doing airbrushing rather than paintbrushing. When you're paintbrushing, it's kind of seeping into larger areas. You'll notice then with working with fabric versus leather, it doesn't spread as much because it kind of seeps in and dies in. So the paint is more concentrated in certain areas, therefore stiffening it up a little bit further with a paintbrush. So overall, you're just gonna be able to keep your material softer if you work with an airbrush. So since we already have our paint mixture ready in which we mixed in the GAC 900, which also helps thin out the mixture, you might be wondering if we need to mix some too thin in before we airbrush this, but I don't think you need to because like I said, the GAC 900 already kind of helps thin out that mixture. So I just make sure that we strain this before we put it into the airbrush because same thing as always when working with too thin and getting the paint ready for the airbrush, you definitely want to make sure that you strain it just to make sure that no clumps or hard kind of dried up paint ends up in your airbrush, which will definitely cause some clogs and some headaches down the road. So now we're ready to just get into airbrushing some super light coats of our red on top of these. And in between each of our coats, we're gonna be going around with a heat gun, and this is super vital to making sure that our material stays nice and soft. And so I recommend that you go around with the heat gun probably about nine to 12 inches or so away from your shoe and just don't hold it down on any one area for too long because you absolutely can burn holes into your shoes and that is something that you definitely do not want to happen. So make sure you're constantly moving around the gun and not holding it on one area for too long. And so if you were to read the directions on the back of any of the fabric mediums that I recommended using, they would probably say something along the lines of make sure that you heat set your product at roughly probably 300 degrees or so for probably something like three to five minutes. I like to just heat set in between coats, probably not for a full three to five minutes in between each of the coats, but probably for about a minute or so in between each of the coats. And then you still definitely wanna allow some dry time. You probably don't have to go the full 15 minutes that we would if we were working with like a leather base shoe, but you still wanna allow some dry time in between coats just for that paint and this mixture to settle in. Now, one of the next most important steps when working on some of your follow-up coats is going to be really spreading out the fabric and trying to press it apart with your hands. What I'll do is insert my hands into the shoes and try to spread my hand out as much as possible. And what you'll notice is you'll start to see some of the white peeking through from the prime knit that's hidden underneath all of the paint. And this is what's really going to help cover up all those little nooks and crannies. You're going to be able to get paint into every surface of these. And this is just going to go a long way. And when somebody eventually puts their feet into these shoes, what's going to happen is the material is going to expand a little bit and you wanna make sure that no white is peeking through. So this step is super important when the shoes eventually do get expanded because at the end of the day, we're trying to create wearable products in the future and we want these to look as good as possible. Now that we have all of our red done, and as you guys could tell, our tape stripe definitely did not hold down, it's time to get into touching up that. So now this is just gonna take a few coats of white to really get this stripe nice and solid again. 
So what I recommend doing is pulling up some of the early colorways of the V2s, like the coppers and the Oreos, just so you can really see this staggered stripe that we're going for. And then what I'll do, go a little bit heavier and wider with the white, just so we can go back with a nice solid dark line of the red to really finalize this staggered stripe. And then we also have this fading out dotting effect that's occurring at the end of the stripe near the front of the shoe. And I've noticed some customizers do this when working with customizing V2s, others don't. And like I keep referencing, I like some of the early colorways of the V2s and they all had this effect. So I definitely wanted to include that on these. And then our last step that we're gonna be doing on these is laying down a vinyl stencil to really get a nice crisp Supreme logo right here in the middle of the stripe. And as always, our final step is gonna be applying our finisher. And since we're working with fabric, we're not gonna be applying any of the liquid finishers that are out there. I'm just gonna be using a simple Krylon matte finish spray to really wrap these up. And now let's go ahead and cue some music and give you guys a final look at how these came out. All right, you guys made it this far. You successfully made it to the end of another tutorial. Today we learned all about everything you need to know when it comes to customizing any type of fabric shoe. And so hopefully we were able to give you guys a couple tips and tricks and possibly even some cues that you guys might not have known about when working with a really unique material like this. And it definitely has a little bit of a learning curve. It takes some getting used to. Typically a lot of people tend to start with leather shoes. So this is definitely a next step that requires, like we said, a few different ingredients along the way to get a nice end product. But hopefully in following all the steps included in today's video, you guys will still be able to create some really unique, awesome pieces of art on fabric material shoes while still keeping them nice and soft. And so to me, that's the biggest learning curve that comes when working with fabric material is are you able to achieve your end product but still keeping it just as soft? And so it can be really easy to just layer up the paint on these shoes get frustrated that your color's not vibrant enough and just continue to cake layer on top of layer on top of layer of paint. And what'll happen eventually is that your shoes are just really gonna stiffen up and they're no longer gonna have that soft fabric feel. And since a customer is gonna be wearing these eventually, hopefully you want these to feel just as soft as if they were to come straight from the factory. So we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Go ahead and hit that like button for us. We would really appreciate it. Make sure you're subscribed to the page and we will see you guys in that next video.